Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome to Nana Best Kitchen. I hope you're making it a great day so far. I am presenting to you today my next beef recipe. We're making beef biryani using beef short ribs. It's going to be so delectable, friends. Let's start. The secret to a delectable pot of biryani is lots of caramelized onions. So let's caramelize these thinly sliced red onions. And it is imperative that you slice the onions really thinly so they can fry sooner. And the oil I'm using is avocado oil because it can take on high heats without becoming toxic. You can also use vegetable oil for this. Now you fry until they become golden brown and take them out and, and then proceed to fry the next batch. It is a good idea to fry them in batches. Now when you take them out, you want to place it in a bowl or a sheet pan that is lined with a paper towel in order to absorb the excess oil. That will help those onions to also become um, crispy as they air dry, which is exactly what we're going for. Perfect, all done. Next thing is to prep our short rib. Now what I'm gonna do is sprinkle a generous amount of equal parts salt and crushed black pepper onto it. Very important to pat your salt and pepper into each short rib, making sure it's coating all the sides. Because the next thing we're gonna do is sear these meat pieces. Now I'm going to drizzle some of this oil we fry the onions in to sear the beef. Just a shallow film of it will go a long way. and leave a reasonable amount of space in between each short rib. Practice social distancing, otherwise you're going to end up developing moisture. We don't want that. When searing, you need to lock in those juices. The last thing you want to do is to place them too close to each other, because when that happens, it means you have overcrowded the pot. They will start releasing those juices you're trying to lock in. So you don't want to defeat the purpose of searing in the first place. Searing also improves the overall taste in the end. So it's one of those win-win situations that I always aim for. Now you want to sear it three to four minutes on each side or until you see a lovely golden brown color formed and also a crust that is hard to break into. And that crust is that seal that locks in those beautiful juices. That is a perfect color. And then we also add searing must occur on a medium high heat. You cannot just use regular medium heat or low heat, it won't work. Those juices will run out. Next thing we're going to do is to prepare the meat sauce because biryani is a two component dish. It's a rice dish and a meat sauce. So in the same pot, we seared our beef. I have these thinly sliced onions I'm going to throw in. And I'm going to be introducing my homemade chicken bouillon. You can use the store-bought. Beef will be preferable. Throw that in there. And you know what's also good in here is a fresh chili flavor kick. I used serrano chilies, which I finely minced. And that just went in. Here is my homemade curry powder, which has turmeric, ginger, cumin, coriander seeds, fennel seeds, which are all part of those warm spices you must have in your biryani. I also have a pinch of nutmeg. We're going to stir all of this in.
You also need about a quarter teaspoon of crushed black pepper. Now at this point, I'm going to also add some garlic paste, followed by ginger paste, some paprika, Now you're going to stir and also add some freshly chopped tomatoes. We also need the juice of half a lemon or lime. Squeeze that in there. A sprinkle of fresh coriander leaves, also known as cilantro. Stir that in. I have one stick of cinnamon, two bay leaves, two star anise, and I also have eight green cardamom pots. So we are cooking on medium heat, by the way. I'm going to add this plain yogurt. You want that in there. That's going to help create a velvety feel in your mouth. It will also help to break the meat down further and make it nice, juicy, and melt in your mouth. Stir that in. Now introduce your meat pieces. And this time around, they can get friendly with each other. They can touch each other, no problem. No social distancing required here. Because at this point, what we're going to do is braise, which is gentle cooking in moistened heat over a prolonged period of time, which will cause the meat to be tender and melt in your mouth. And add just a little bit of water to thin the sauce up. And the water also becomes your braising liquid and a splash or two is sufficient. You don't want your sauce to be too thin like soup. And your braising liquid could very well be a broth, such as chicken, beef, or vegetable broth. However, this pot is already overloaded with a ton of very good flavors. So I can safely say water is perfect for this. Now I also caramelized some onions in the beginning. I'm just going to throw a handful of it in here because it will bring a depth of flavor we would love and appreciate in here. Submerge your onions and cover the pot to cook gently on low heat for the next 40 minutes. The rice of choice for any biryani dish is basmati and you want to get the best quality basmati rice you can get your hands on. Friends, we have come to the point where we need to cook our rice for our biryani dish. And for that, we will need some water that has come to a boil and we need to season it generously with some salt. Now this amount of water is about three times the regular amount you would need to cook rice or steam it into a fluffy state. What we're doing today though is we're parboiling the rice. So you would need more water than usual. Now here is some of the oil we fry the onions in. Just a little bit to flavor the rice up. Yes, beautiful people, you can throw flavor even at parboiling your rice. You sure can. Your sister, madame, just showed you how. There are so many other flavors you can add, but you know the sauce is already extremely flavorful. So what you're looking for, by the way, is your rice grains as you parboil them on a high heat and all this water that's seasoned well is the rice grains, you want them to have a translucency 
on the coating of them, all right? So the core is going to be opaque. And you'd confirm this by taking one rice grain and breaking it open. And once you've confirmed it, you're going to drain it immediately and set it aside. The sauce has been cooking or braising for 45 minutes, so it's perfect. The meat is tender, almost falling off of the bone. And here I have some saffron going into some hot water to steep. And you see how it immediately releases its yellow color. So this is going to be our natural way of arriving at that two-tone signature biryani color. So some of the rice grains will be pure white and then some of them will be yellow. Now saffron is a spice that comes from the flower of crocus sativus and it has a floral fragrance to it so that's really lovely. I have poured the rice onto the, the beef sauce and also drizzled on the saffron juice. Now I'm adding the fried crispy fried onions next you want to trap some of the steam but you want to use a barrier that is breathable lintless paper towels work perfectly or a clean kitchen towel will work as well the reason why the, you need it to be breathable is so that the rice becomes this fluffy all right they don't stick to each other at all and they just kind of fall off the fork with much ease. And at this point, that opaque core is also cooked perfectly through. Here is your biryani being served party style. Just like in West Africa, you will not go to a really lit party and not find your jollof rice. Well, same applies to most East African countries. I know for sure Tanzania and Kenya, uh, the ones I'm actually referencing here, biryani is representing it. That party is going to be lit. All right. Just like so. And I sprinkle on some fresh cilantro or coriander leaves chopped. And then I also sprinkle some of those crispy fried onions. And you can, by the way, substitute the saffron with a potent carrot juice or turmeric steeped in some hot water. And I left some ingredient substitute details in the description box. Below. Oh my goodness gracious friends, another beef recipe done and done. Woo, it's so good. You have to give this a shot. I gotta go join my family. No wonder they couldn't wait. It is so delicious, friends. Give it a shot. It is chop time. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time, and here in Anava's Kitchen, chop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.